Welcome to Jemerson Tutorials. In this session, we focus on mathematics with mechanics and the topic in particular is forces in equilibrium. Ladder problems in particular is always a problem. Students find it difficult to interpret questions and solve. And so we're going to look at this question which says a uniform ladder of weight w and length 3l rests against a smooth vertical wall the foot of the ladder rests on a rough horizontal floor so that the ladder makes an angle tan inverse of four with the horizontal floor given that the ladder is in a vertical plane which is perpendicular to the wall find the least possible value of mu the coefficient of friction between the floor and the ladder if the ladder is in equilibrium given that the coefficient of friction between the ladder and the floor is 2 over 15 find how far up from the foot of the ladder a person of weight w can climb without the ladder slipping this was gce june 2000 session okay any question that has to do with ladder problems the diagram would always look like this a right angle triangle in which the floor is horizontal and the wall is vertical the ladder is the hypotenuse so the first thing you should do when you see a ladder problem is now to look whether the ladder makes an angle with the floor or with the wall if you go and put the wrong angle you would get a wrong calculation in this question the angle is with the floor majority of the questions the angle is with the floor but in some cases they would say the angle is with the wall so you make sure you put the angle appropriately in order not to get a wrong calculation the next thing to look for when you are reading a ladder problem is whether the wall is rough or smooth in this question it is smooth but in some cases it will be rough when it is rough then you have to indicate the friction of the wall which is always vertically upwards there is the reaction of the ladder which we can denote as R1 there is also the reaction of the floor which we can denote as R2 the floor will always be rough except for some situation which I doubt the floor is always rough so when it is rough we need to indicate the friction and the friction is always perpendicular to the reaction and so this friction is opposing the ladder from sliding down so it's but normal that it should be opposing or directed towards the wall so as to prevent the ladder from sliding that friction we are going to denote it as simply f don't put mu r in the case where the least value of the coefficient of friction mu is acts like in this case so simply put but f here because we're going to be making a replacement for it the maximum value actually of the friction on any rough surface is always mu r and so we're going to use that argument at the end in order to get the least value of mu that is asked in the question so just f is enough here and then there is also the weight of the ladder which is always at the center of gravity will be acting vertically down and it is given by w in the equation the length of the ladder also we need to represent it if nothing is mentioned about the length of the ladder denote it as 2l the two there is to make sure that when you divide by two as you are getting the distances especially around the weight here we need the horizontal distance of the weight so that we can use it when we are taking moments when you put two l as i said it would just make sure you don't have fractions when you are dividing by two 
It can easily make you to solve. Here they have imposed an odd number to us. The length of the ladder is 3L. So half of it there will be 3L on 2 and down also 3L on 2. We are bound to do with the odd number as the question emphasized. Now, my forces, all the forces are already in place. The reaction of the floor, the friction of the floor, and the reaction of the wall, then the weight of the ladder. At some point, I would be taking moments about the top of the ladder, although I can also take moments about the bottom. Top of the ladder is convenient, it's easier to handle. So always make sure you take moments about the top of the ladder. Actually, since the system is in equilibrium, the solving has to be like this. You resolve vertically, you form one equation. Resolve horizontally, you form another equation. Then you take moments about the top of the ladder. That is how you are going to solve any ladder problem that presents itself before you. Talking about moments then, since I'm taking moments about the top of the ladder, when I take moments about the top of the ladder, any force whose line of action passes through that top. Let us call that top A and then the bottom B. So if I take moments about A, any force whose line of action passes there, like this R1 now, it has zero moment as I'm taking moments about A. If there was friction, we should have been acting vertically up its own moment would also be zero since there is no perpendicular distance from that point A to where their lines of action are passing through A. Forces that have a turning effect on the ladder then as I take moments about the top would be W, R2 and the friction. Take note that moment of a force is the force times the perpendicular distance from the line joining the point where I'm taking moments and so for the weight I would need this perpendicular distance the angle is theta here and by corresponding angle this is also theta this line being parallel to this one this angle is corresponding to this one and so they are equal so I put theta there and then considering just this triangle up the hypotenuse will be 3l on 2 the distance being at the adjacent it will take cos theta so the hypotenuse 3l on 2 times cos theta will give that distance there is also r2 another vertical force and i would also need the perpendicular distance from the line joining the top of the ladder where I am taking the moments. This is part of the whole triangle whose hypotenuse is the length of the ladder. And so the length of the ladder 3L cos theta would give me that horizontal distance. There is the friction which is horizontal. I also need the perpendicular distance which is now this vertical one it's part of the whole triangle again and is at the opposite of the of the angle so sine theta will be used there i will have the whole hypotenuse which is 3l times sine theta would give me that distance Once all the forces and their perpendicular distances are in place, I can now start my solving. Resolving vertically. Remember at equilibrium, the resultant of the forces in the vertical sense is zero and the resultant of the forces in the horizontal sense is also zero. So we expect that this R2 which is acting up minus W which is acting down should give us zero. So R2 minus W equals zero implies R2 equals W. That's equation one. Resolving horizontally
horizontally we have R1 acting to the right and F the friction of the floor acting to the left so R1 minus F should be equal to 0 and we have that R1 equals F equation 2 and the last equation is obtained as I earlier said by taking moments about the top of the ladder if I take moments about the top of the ladder take moments about A, the top of the ladder W has the tendency to turn the ladder clockwise as we are taking moments about A F2, the friction of the floor has the tendency to turn the ladder clockwise whereas the reaction of the floor R2 has the tendency to turn the ladder anti-clockwise and so by the principle of moments the sum of the clockwise moments should be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments so the moment of the weight which is the weight times the perpendicular distance 3L cos theta all over 2 plus that of friction which is F times its own perpendicular distance 3L sine theta should be equal to the moment of the reaction of the floor the lone force that is turning the ladder clockwise relative to that point should be R2 times since the force is vertical we take the horizontal distance which is 3L cos theta at this point it is important to note that we are looking for F and F should normally be in terms of W the other force and so R2 has to be replaced in terms of W from equation 1 R2 is simply W so I will replace R2 and I would also cancel 3L which is common and so when I'm doing that I get W over 2 cos theta plus F sin theta equals W cos theta in the question we are given that the angle with the floor is tan inverse of 4 so we can easily get tan theta so the next step will be to divide through by cos theta so that tan theta can come out so dividing through by cos theta I get W over 2 plus F tan theta equals W and from the question theta was supposed to be tan inverse of 4 so that tan theta would then be 4 so we can then say that W over 2 plus 4F equals W and so 4F would be W minus W over 2 which is W over 2 and so we get 4F to be equal to W over 2 so that F should be W over 8 now we know that the maximum possible value of friction is always given by mu r so we can write then that f is less than or equal to mu r because mu r is the maximum possible value of friction on any rough surface and so we can now say f being w over 8 would say w over 8 should be less than or equal to mu r and the r here is r2 because the friction f is the friction of the floor 
and the reaction of the floor that corresponds to that R should be R2. And so we can say that W over 8 is less than or equal to mu into R2, which is W from equation 1. W would cancel. And we can now say that 1 over 8 is less than or equal to mu or mu is greater than or equal to 1 over 8. And from here, it is then obvious that the least possible value of mu, which they are asking us, is 1 over 8. So as the question asks, we're asked to find the least possible value of mu. So that first part is answered. In the next part, we are given that the coefficient of friction between the ladder and the floor is 2 over 15 and then asked to find how far up from the foot of the ladder a person of weight W can climb without the ladder slipping. Without the ladder slipping means without equilibrium being disturbed. So take note of that word slipping. Uh, when, it, when they say without slipping then it is about the fact that he can climb just at the moment where equilibrium is about to be broken. And so we are still going to use the fact that there will be equilibrium at that point of the ladder being about to slip. Okay, so we need another diagram where the weight of the man would have to be included. Anyway, I can go back to the diagram and indicate it there. Suppose the man climbs up to this level. Let us assume that he climbs up here, although it is possible that he can climb up to that other level. But assuming that he climbs up to this level, I would indicate his weight here. And that weight again, the question says, is W. And so if he climbs up by a distance X, they want that distance that he would climb and reach before equilibrium is disturbed or without the ladder slipping. So when I do that, I will need again his own horizontal distance, the distance or the horizontal distance of his weight. Because I need to take moments again about the top of the ladder with this new situation. If he climbs by X, then the rest of the distance to go and reach up there which should be part of this other triangle that his weight has created here. The distance, the rest of the distance, if he climbs by x, the rest of the distance should be 3L minus x. So this horizontal distance would be obtained from this other triangle whose hypotenuse is 3L minus x. So it's important to know from here right to here, for example, right down here should be 3L minus X that distance and so uh, I will need to use it as the hypotenuse of that triangle so that I get 3L minus X times the cosine of the angle will give me this distance that is the additional information I need to draw here it was possible to draw another diagram, but uh, we can just use this one and then proceed. Okay, so we again, this is a new setup. We resolve horizontally, vertically, and then take moments about the top to solve for that distance x, which they are asking. So I will say resolving vertically. I will get uh, vertically again, I get 
R2 acting vertically up and it should be balanced by the two W's, the weight of the ladder and that of the man, which are acting vertically down. So we can simply say that R2 equals 2W. R2 is up minus W minus W equals 0. So it just gives us this directly. Then resolving horizontally, we have the reaction of the wall R1 acting to the right. Uh, and friction of the floor which is acting horizontally to the left so R1 minus the friction of the floor should be equal to zero when you resolve horizontally but then remember they have given now the value of friction so we can then conclude that R1 should be equal to mu R. It is mu R2 actually. R1 equals 2 all over 15 R2. And what is R2? R2 is 2W. Whatever the case, we allow it here for now. Equation 1. Equation 2, sorry. And then now we take moments about the top of the ladder. Again, R1, the moment is zero because its, it's line of action is passing through that point. We are taking moments about. We have the weight of the ladder turning clockwise, the weight of the man turning clockwise, friction of the floor also turning clockwise. Uh, the sum of moments of the weight of the ladder, the weight of the man and the friction of the floor should be equal to the moment of the reaction of the floor according to the principle of moments. And so we start with the weight of the ladder times the perpendicular distance 3L over 2 cos theta plus the weight of the man times the perpendicular distance 3L minus X cos theta plus the friction of the floor and that friction as I said is supposed to be F and F now corresponds to 2 all over 15 R2 mu R mu is 2 over 15 what the question give and R2 which we have to put first let us put uh, 2 all over 15 R2 times the perpendicular distance for the friction which is this other one 3L sine theta should be equal to the lone force R2 that is turning the ladder anti-clockwise R2 times its own perpendicular distance which is this horizontal one 3L cos theta from there we need to replace the R's so that the W's can cancel remember our target is getting this X and x should normally be in terms of l which was part of the length of the ladder so i need to eliminate r2 for the beginning by replacing it with 2w according to equation 1 so i get w on 2.3l cos theta plus w into 3l minus x cos theta plus 2 all over 15 into r2 would be replaced by 2w dot 3l sine theta equals r2 again replaced by 2w dot 3l cos theta you now notice that the w's will cancel
and we can tidy up before simplifying again so we get 3L over 2 cos theta plus 3L minus X cos theta plus 2 times 3 or rather 3 can cancel 15 to give 5 and then 2 times 2 there will be 4 all over 5L sine theta equals 2 times 3 will be 6L cos theta in the next step we need to eliminate cos theta in order to have tan we divide through by cos theta so that we have tan remember tan theta from the previous work here tan theta was 4 the question gave it as tan inverse of 4 as the angle so tan theta was supposed to be 4 so dividing through by cos theta we can get that tan theta so that's what we get after dividing through by cos theta then I have 3L on 2 plus 3L minus X plus 4 all over 5L into 4 tan theta is 4 equals 6L uh, I can multiply through by 10 the LCM of these fractions so that I don't have complications when I'm simplifying so times 10 times 10 every term multiplied by 10 I get times 10 here will give 5 when I cancel 2 by 10 I'll get 5 so that gives anyway let me just write all 3L over 2 into 10 plus 3L into 10 minus X into 10 plus 16L over 5 into 10 equals 6L into 10 simplify we get 15L plus 30L minus 10X plus 32L equals 60L now this we have 15 plus 30 is 45 45 plus 32 should be 77 so negative 10 X plus 77 L equals 60 L and so negative 10 X would be 60 L minus 77 L and negative 10 X would be equal to negative 17 L and so X would be 17 over 10 L so this is the distance that the man would climb before the ladder begins to slip the x that is the distance in terms of l and it is showing that um, half of uh, 3l should be 1.5 l and this is 1.7 l so actually the man climbed up past the center of the ladder before the sleeping began.